Welcome to Word Stream Live, where the logos and rain word ministers to those in need. With your host and online minister, Scott Graham. Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Word Stream Live. I'm your online minister, Scott Grimm. Glad to have you here with us this evening on December 20th, 2021. Wow, is time flying by. So just uh, got back from Ohio uh, yesterday about uh, noon time, I guess, uh, Eastern Standard Time, and we had a wonderful trip in Ohio. Uh, I want to say thank you for all of you, uh, those of you that have prayed uh, for me and prayed for my family. Uh, what a wonderful time we had. Uh, we got to spend uh, some much needed time with uh, my wife's uh, mother and, and her uh, father-in-law, my father-in-law, John Pavlov, for his uh, 75th birthday celebration. That was a great time. Uh, got to meet a lot of new people, uh, crossed paths with uh, so some great people up in Ohio and and uh, made some, some great relationships. I believe the Lord is putting together... Uh, uh, a wonderful uh, team of people uh, for ministry uh, forthcoming and it's like, excited about that. So we had a great time uh, up in Ohio and glad to be back home. You know, there's a saying out there, there's there's no place like home. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I kind of get that. It is nice to be in your own bed and to, uh, you know, get back in your routine, if you will. Uh, but, but really, uh, when you're about your father's business, uh, you know, um, routine is, is um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's 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 different every day, you know. So you don't know what a day holds, but the, the daily, you know, routine of, of getting up at the same time and things like that are certainly, uh, you know, a great value. And and being around, you know, uh, your your wife and and being in your own bed and home is, is certainly a great blessing. So it's glad, I'm glad to be home. There is no place like home in that regard. I and mean, it's kind of ironic that uh, we're going to be talking about tonight about, uh, you know, there's no temple in heaven, part three, and in the new Jerusalem. Uh, and I, I think that that's a fitting close this evening is there's no place like home because home is going to be like a, like nothing else we've ever seen before. Amen. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about the new Jerusalem tonight. So uh, when it comes to no place like home, that's the ultimate no place like home. So excited to, to be here with you. If you're joining us uh, tonight, uh, and you haven't uh, subscribed or, or uh, liked our, our videos or our channel yet, certainly would encourage you to do that. The more uh, subscribers we get to our YouTube channel, uh, the more uh, we're able to broadcast to a, a broader audience. So, uh, and there's also, uh, you know, possibilities to start receiving, you know, some ministry income that will enable us to even reach more uh, people. So the more subscribers we get, the, the larger our audience, the more of the gospel of Jesus Christ we can get out there. And again, this is Word Stream Live. This ain't about me. This isn't about, uh, you know, anything that I'm necessarily doing. I'm just uh, trying to be about my father's business, uh, especially in these last days. Amen. So tonight we're going to jump right into uh, our, our third ser uh, part of our series on there's no temple in heaven and get right into the book of Revelation. So I want to be sharing with you uh, tonight out of the book of Revelation. And again, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, our uh, blue, blue letter Bible, uh, dot com and or, I'm sorry, dot org. And again, if you're not familiar with Blue Letter Bible, I uh, certainly would encourage you uh, to uh, start getting used to it. Uh, use it on your laptop. Go to blueletterbible.org. Uh, or uh, also you could uh, download the app on your phone, uh, go to your Google store, your Apple store, uh, find the Blue Letter Bible app and download it on your phone. You're absolutely going to love this resource. Again, we're blessed uh, to be the uh, only generation of believers uh, to have uh, so many great resources at our fingertips and to where there's really no excuse uh, to not show yourself uh, to be approved, to have, rightly study the Word of God. So blueletterbible.org, at some point in time, uh, maybe we'll, we'll start to get sponsored by them uh, as much as I advertise uh, for them. But anyway, so tonight, again, we're going to get into uh, the, the new heaven, uh, the, the uh, new city, Jerusalem, uh, that's going to be descending out of heaven uh, and coming to the earth uh, in the last days. Uh, and, and let's get right into the Word uh, tonight. Now, I saw... And again, I'm reading out of Revelations 21, 1. And by the way, this is the new King James Version. Uh, and you can choose the King James Version, you know, all these different versions of the Bible here on Blue Letter Bible. But I'm reading out of the new King James Version. That's the version that I've been using 
uh, for most of my 32 years now walking with the Lord. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. And, you know, again, you can deduct from that what you want, but we also, you know, that uh, the earth is going to be completely destroyed and baptized in fire. That's very much scriptural. Uh, and perhaps that's the reason that there's no more sea because the, the heaven was destroyed by fire and therefore there wouldn't be any sea. And this new heaven and new earth is what John the Revelator is now seeing as he was taken up uh, in the spirit and shown these things by an angel. Uh, verse two, then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. These shall be, there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. It was not a blessing. Uh, knowing that these things are coming for all of us that believe. Verse uh, 6, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirst. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, immoral sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Again, a stark contrast between, you know, believers and un unbelievers. Uh, and, you know, believers are saved by grace through faith and they're clothed in white linen. We talked about that, that last week. Uh, and they're, they're, uh, they're, they're clean and they're purified by God because of the work, the finished work of Jesus Christ. Uh, and therefore their lives are different. They're still in the world, but they're not of the world. Uh, they, they live a more a holy and more righteous life because they want to obey God and, and follow his commandments to love the Lord, our God, with all of our heart, soul, strength, our body, mind, spirit, and love our neighbor as ourselves. So, you know, the, the believers the, whose names are written in the Lamb Book of Life are going to inherit all these things. And the unbelievers are going to find their place in the lake of fire. And we talked about all these terrible, terrible things that were coming, that are coming upon the earth and very soon. Uh, in these end uh, of days. And that's why I feel so led and so many other, uh, you know, pastors and teachers uh, around the world and around, especially in our country right now, are focused on eschatology and end times because we truly believe that we are in the last days. The Lord could come at any time now. Uh, and those of us that believe in a pre-trib, pre-tribulation rapture, uh, believe that the Lord could come at any time uh, to uh, rapture up his church and, and take us out of here and and, and then these terrible judgments uh, would, would then come upon the earth. Verse uh, 9, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Now, this is very interesting, this, uh, this, this uh, discussion that the angel is having with John about showing him the bride and the lamb's wife. And then he gets right into talking about the great city, the new Jerusalem that's going to come down out of heaven in verse 10. But remember that, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates, 12 angels at the gates. Then the names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And again, it's very important as believers that we understand the significance of us being grafted in uh, to uh, the Abra Abrahamic covenant uh, through uh, the, the Jewish uh, God's chosen people, Israel. Uh, you can see here just how important uh, the 12 tribes, the nation of Israel is to the Lord, uh, that it, it, that this holy city uh, is going to have 12 gates, okay, uh, for three gates on each side uh, when it comes down. And those 12 gates are, uh, with angels at those gates, have the names written of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel on there. 
Uh, three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west, again, symbolizing the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel. Now, the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I want to get back to that in a minute. Very, very important. And, and again, you know, if well, let's just get back there right now. Let's go back up to that scripture where, he, where the angel said, come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. That's speaking of the church. OK, that's speaking of you and I. And and again, good doctrine, good teaching, good theology, uh, good hermeneutics uh, is the understanding that uh, this is symbolic of the church, the city itself that, that, is, that is being built uh, and I believe is nearing completion, ready to come down very soon. Uh, it, it is, uh, you know, at the at the end of the thousand year reign, but, uh, you know, very soon in uh, the Lord's time, for sure, for with the Lord, you know, a thousand years is like one day. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, the symbolism that we have of the city resembling uh, the, the believer's life and how the life of a believer should be built. So, again, you know, we've got the very first, you know, introduction is these the, the great high wall with the 12 gates uh, in the, the 12 tribes of Israel. So we should, as believers, understand the significance of that in that we were grafted in to uh, the the um, Jewish, you know, nation uh, through the Abrahamic covenant. And uh, the uh, we know that when Christ came into his own, that his own did not recognize him as as their Messiah. Uh, they were looking for a political king, uh, and he came as a spiritual king to forgive mankind of their sins and restore them back in a right relationship with God. So they missed out on him. Uh, they didn't believe that he was the, the, the Christ, that he was the Messiah. And, and therefore, uh, because of their you know, refusal to accept him, the blessing is that us Gentiles were then uh, part of God's plan, that he was going to allow us to become part of his chosen priesthood, his royal priesthood, his his chosen people. So we've been blessed to be grafted in. Uh, but then he says, you know, that that on the uh, on the wall of the city, that the city had been was going to be built on 12 foundations. And on them were the names of who? The 12 apostles of the Lamb. And again, in the life of every believer, in the life of the church, the life of the church is to be built on the teachings of of the apostles, that is the foundation, with Jesus Christ being the, uh, the chief cornerstone of the foundation. Uh, but the foundation is to be built upon the apostles' teachings, and that's the word of God. And Jesus, being the chief cornerstone, is the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among men. But the uh, foundation for the church, very important, because we live in a day and age of uh, thousands of false teachers and false prophets and prophets for profit and, and false apostles. Listen, there are only 12 apostles. And these apostles were trained by Jesus. Uh, they were uh, given the word of God by Jesus. They, they witnessed all of the signs and wonders and miracles uh, pe performed by Jesus. They were uh, taken in the spirit uh, to, uh, to be a witness of his resurrection. They were shown, uh, they saw him, you know, rise uh, in, in, in the, the, uh, you know, be uh, resurrected. Uh, when he came back, they saw him bodily. Uh, you know, and and on their uh, because of their authority, because of their uh, you know personal instruction by Christ Himself, uh, they're the foundation on which the life of the believer is to be built. It's on the apostles' doctrine that the church is being built. And again, the city is reflective of the life of, of the church and the life of the of us believers. In verse fifteen, and he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth, and he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. So, in other words, and I'm going to show you a, a couple of pictures here in a minute of, of uh, you know, an artist's rendition of what heaven is going to look like. When I say heaven, I'm talking about the new heaven that's going to descend uh, and come upon the earth, uh, the new earth, and uh, it's it's going to be a shape of a cube, okay? It's atmospherically, the city is laid out as a square. It says its length is as great as its width, and it's measured, uh, you know, uh, to be its height, length, and, and uh, breadth all equal. And that that uh, that measure is one hundred. I'm sorry, uh, is uh, twelve thousand furlongs, and twelve thousand furlongs is about fourteen hundred to fifteen hundred miles somewhere in there. In there, so if you took the continental United States 
and you cut it in half uh, and you took the entire, you know, eastern half of the United States, that's about the size that we're talking about here, that the new Jerusalem, and, and this is going to be, you know, heaven's, uh, you know, heaven where all believers are going to live uh, in uh, for all eternity. And, and that's about the size of it. So about 1,500 square miles. And so, you know, you can start to think about, you know, just about how many people are going to be there by the size of that. Now, again, it's uh, it's 1,500. Remember, it's, but, but remember, it's 1,500 miles high, 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles deep. So, you know, and, and because we're going to be in our, our spiritual, uh, you know, glorified, uh, incorruptible bodies, uh, you know, we don't know exactly how we're going to be able to move around, but, you know, we, we might be occupying all areas of this new city, Jerusalem. Uh, we just don't know that, but it's going to be incredible. Uh, but that's the picture that we're seeing here. And it's an actual city uh, that's going to descend out of heaven. They're going to be 1500 uh, miles high, wide depth uh, and, and, and so on. So uh, it's going to be a cube, uh, basically. Then he measured its wall, 140 cubits according to the measure of a man that is of an angel and, and so 140 cubits is about 216 feet tall so we're gonna you're gonna see again this picture here in a few minutes but you're gonna you, you can already see the this cube uh this this you know um uh, atmospheric uh, city descending out of heaven uh 1500 you know square miles uh in it, then it's going to have a wall all the way around it that's about 216 feet high. And, and the construction of the wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like clear glass. I mean, start to listen uh, to the beauty of this magnificent uh, place called heaven, this new Jerusalem, heaven on earth. That's exactly where we're going to be living uh, in, in the end and for all eternity in this beautiful uh, heaven on earth, in this new Jerusalem, on this new earth. Uh, that's going to uh, be, you know, really uh, recreated and even created uh, and, and come back uh, to to earth from God. And God is going to be uh, living there with us. It's going to be quite phenomenal. Uh, in verse 19, the foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third uh, chalcondony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardinox, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth uh, uh, chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. And again, these uh, twelve, you know, um, remember we're talking about the foundations of the wall of the city, and we know that the foundation of the city, those twelve courses, were who? Uh, they, they were the, each of them was a name for one of the apostles. So again, we're seeing uh, this how much God, you know cares about and how much uh, Christ cares about uh, the, the city so much being built on the foundation of the apostles. And you can see the beauty of it and giving them the recognition and rightfully so uh, that they deserve. You know, remember uh, these these 12 uh, believers, these 12 uh, disciples who became apostles, uh, ambassadors for Christ, you know, gave up everything to follow him. You know, they were fishermen, they were uh, they were tax collectors, so on and so forth. And they 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 gave up their old uh, their, their everything to follow Jesus. And he poured himself into them uh, in, during his ministry for three and a half years. And 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 the Lord here is showing how much uh, he appreciates that, uh, and how much uh, how important it is that we build our foundation of faith doctrinally on the 12 apostles. I don't think that could be overemphasized. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. I mean, wow. Again, uh, you know, how much does the Lord care about uh, the, you know, Israel and the 12 tribes of Israel? And, you know, you've got these 12 gates, uh, three gates on each uh, of the four walls that surround the city. Uh, and each of those gates has an angel, you know, uh, looking over and guarding over the gate. And each of the gate, uh, uh, those 12 gates has a uh, has, has a uh, the image of a pearl. You know how beautiful pearls are uh, in, in the city uh, streets. Uh, you know, the whole city was pure gold and, and transparent like glass. I mean, you know, wow, what a what a what a picture that is. And, you know, I, I can see why so many artists want to try and, 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 you know, draw and paint and, and, and give their rendition of, of this beautiful city. And really, it's so hard for us even to fathom and imagine 
Uh, but, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to show you a few pictures here just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, again, uh, the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. And now that he gets into the glory of the new Jerusalem. And here's the important thing. But I saw no temple in it for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. So, again, uh, you know, the, the, the city, heaven, is going to be illuminated uh, by by God himself. And there's no God's presence is going to be with men. Uh, and therefore, there's no need for a temple uh, to be there because God is, you know, going to be present uh, with man. There's no reason to go into a temple. There's no reason for God to be in the temple. God is going to be actually uh, in, in the city in, in, in eternity with us. The city had no need of the sun or the of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God illuminated it, the Lamb is its light. Again, God is, God is, his presence is going to be there and it's going to be glorious and there's not going to be any need for the sun anymore or the moon or the stars. Uh, you know, the lamb of God, uh, Christ is going to be there and he's the light of the world. So in the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means, but there shall by no means enter into it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie. And here's the key, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. So you can see, again, that contrast between those who, uh, and we talked about this, accept the mark of the beast or those that have denied the Holy Spirit in Christ, uh, the, the preaching of the gospel, uh, and, and those the, that have died you know, that haven't accepted Christ uh, as the uh, propitiation for their sins, they're gonna, they're not going to be here. They're not going to be in heaven, you know. And, you know, again, I taught this last uh, time in part two that, you know, there's no, that there's no such thing as, you know, we're all children of God. That's not true. Okay, so the children of God are those uh, that have been called, uh, that have responded to the Holy Spirit uh, and have, have uh, you know, trusted Jesus Christ, uh, as Lord of their lives and as uh, the Savior uh, who's, who was the ultimate sacrifice made for them on, on, on their behalf. Uh, and therefore, they're in a right relationship with God. They've repented of their sins. Uh, they've uh, accepted Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. And again, he said, no man gets to the Father except through me. And some versions say no man get, gets to get to heaven except through me again. Uh, so again, you know, clear distinction. Uh, between, you know, these two different uh, people groups, okay? So, you know, uh, there's not going to be any, you know, unbelievers there, and there's, there's no gray area, you know, it's it's you know, it's either you accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, and your name's written in the Lamb Book of Life, uh, or you've denied him, and you died in your sins, and therefore, uh, you're going to be separated uh, from God, and eventually, uh, you're going to be judged, and you're going to be thrown into the the, the lake of fire. Uh, verse uh, chapter 22 now. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. I mean, try and imagine that, you know. And sometimes it's better just to read this and close your eyes and just try and visualize, you know, how magnificent this, this place is going to be. We can't even begin to realize, begin to understand it, you know. And I love that passage of Scripture says that, that, you know, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And here's a certain situation uh, that certainly fits the bill there that there, we can't even begin to understand because he's so greater than we are in his ability to create and his ability to imagine and his ability to show his glory and his love and his majesty uh, and to, you know, create something as beautiful as this city uh, in, in heaven uh, is just beyond our ability to comprehend. Amen. Uh, so in yeah, verse 22, in the middle of its street and on either side of the river that was just spoken of was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits. Again, that 12, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. Verse 24, uh, they shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun for the Lord God gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Wow. 
So, you know, this place is going to be so magnificent and we're going to reign, you know, with the Lord, you know, forever and ever uh, for all eternity. There's no more, you know, well, we're going to look at some of the things. There's no more coming quickly. So the uh, verse six, then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. Then the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angel to show his service the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I saw John. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me again, the angel said to John, see that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. And again, just a reminder for all of us that believe that, uh, you know, God, the ultimate family man, he's created all of these angelic beings uh, and they're our fellow servants and they're going to be worshiping God with us. Uh, they're going to be uh, communing with us in God and it's going to be an incredible, uh, you know, uh, display for all of eternity of, of koinia, of fellowship uh, in, 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 with the word of God and with, you know, again, you know, of those who keep the words of this book, you know, and worship God, uh, verse uh, 10. And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. And so the angel saying to John, don't seal the words, you know, of the, this book. Don't, don't hide it away. Okay. Uh, because the time is at hand. He wants, and the Lord wants the word to get out. He wants all believers to know, uh, what is coming. And then verse 11, he was unjust. Let him be unjust still. He was filthy. Let him be filthy still. He was righteous. Let him be righteous still. And uh, he was holy. Let him be holy still. Okay. So, you know, once the, once this time comes and the Lord returns, it, it's all over at that point. And so, you know, wherever you find yourself, that's why we need to be ready uh, because, you know, there, it's going to be the end of one age and the beginning of another. Uh, verse 12, and behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they might have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs, this is outside of heaven, are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. Again, a clear distinction between the children of God and the children of this world. Uh, and the, the ultimate consequence of not becoming a follower of Christ, a believer of the way, the truth, and the life is that you're going to be outside that city uh, like the dogs and the sorcerers. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit of the bride say, come and let him who hears come, say, come and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. And then he gives a warning for I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city and from the things to come, which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, surely I'm coming quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's the end of the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, the revelation of the second coming of the Messiah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's going to be, you know, quite amazing uh, to, you know, to be, uh, to see, you know, heaven uh, descending uh, on, on the earth and to, to be able to be a part of, uh, you know, of, of, of eternity with God. Uh, it's it's going to be like nothing you and I could ever imagine. Amen. So, and again, I want to show you just a few pictures uh, of what it's going to be like. And, uh, you know, here here is a, a couple of pictures. So this one here is showing the cubes, you know, the cube uh, type of, uh, you know, structure uh, that, that we see written of in the book of Revelation. Again, 1,500 miles high, 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles deep. Uh, it's a cube. Uh, in the city walls, and again, it's showing the gates here, uh, where all the gates are. But you know, again, the city walls being about 216 feet high. Notice the the 12 different colors of the foundation. Again, uh, the foundation being built uh, on the the names of each of the apostles. And again, I think this is uh, this is symbolic of the life of a believer. 
that our, our teaching, that our doctrine should be built on the foundation of the apostles, on the word of God that they had written, uh, the, 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 the accounts that they had given of what they witnessed of Christ, uh, his death, burial, his resurrection, his ministry, uh, the signs and wonders that he performed, and his doctrine that Jesus taught them uh, during his three and a half years uh, spent with them. And again, that's the, the foundation, that the 12 colors that you see there. Again, the, the uh, 12 gates, three on each side, symbolic of the 12 tribes, and each of them having one of the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, and if you zoomed in on this, you could see uh, the, the pearl uh, in the gates, and you could also see an angel uh, you know, that is there uh, guarding and watching over each gate. Because again, uh, you know, kind of symbolic of you know, when the Lord put a, a cherubim uh, and a seraphim in, in front of uh, the, the Garden of Eden, you know, uh, not allowing, you know, fallen man uh, back into that sacred place. There's going to be nothing coming into the new Jerusalem that's defiled. Uh, and again, this is symbolic of that uh, with these angels, you know, standing guard over each of the 12 gates. Here's another artist's rendition of uh, the new city. And, you know, again, we, we, none of these really do justice, justice here. And I don't, I don't know and, and doubt that, you know, these mansions are going to look like this, but, you know, again, our, our imagination as an artist or uh, as a human being can only go so far, but here you see the angels, you see the gates, you see the pearl, uh, you see the river of life, you know, flowing freely from the throne of God. Uh, you see the uh, tree of life, uh, both on each side of the the, the the river and uh, you see if you zoom in closer you can see the the fruits that are uh, the the 12 fruits that are giving you know uh fruit off uh, every month uh, so on and forth so forth another you know artist rendition uh of of the of the city the new jerusalem you know coming down from heaven so again you know heaven is going to be you know beyond our ability to imagine it's going to be beyond our uh, capability to even comprehend it. And, and that's uh, what I think is so important. Amen. So now, you know, I think uh, it's important uh, that you and I, you know, today, uh, you know, really begin to prepare uh, for, you know, what's coming uh, in again, you know, chronologically in the end of the age, you know, the, the prophecies are being fulfilled. Matter of fact, I was reading uh, just uh, the other day, and I think this is another prophecy that's really being fulfilled uh, right now uh, before our very eyes. And it talks about, uh, I believe it's in, yeah, it's in Isaiah. Uh, it talks about uh, that Jerusalem, that even though it was uh, not just Jerusalem, but Israel being desolate, uh, was going to come back and uh, it was going to uh, become so fruitful that it was going to provide uh, fruit uh, in, in Isaiah 27, verse 6. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. Uh, and I believe that's being fulfilled today because Israel is uh, becoming one of the leading um, exporters, uh, especially in the, the Mediterranean part of the world, of, of fruits and vegetables. Uh, if you get a chance to travel the countryside in Israel. Uh, it's, it's incredible to see, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, just in the last 20 years, it's been transformed uh, by the, all the different uh, agricultural, you know, um, lots and plots and farms and so on and so forth. And it's become really an agricultural center uh, uh, for the world uh, with regards to, uh, you know, the, the fruit that's being, you know, produced there. So again, I think that's another Bible prophecy you know, being fulfilled as we speak. So, you know, now, you know, we, we've already read that heaven is going to be a place where there's no more tears, there's no more pain, there's no more suffering, there's no more sin, uh, there's there's nothing but joy. There's a lot of, you know, um, uncertainty, I guess, about, you know, some of the things that we might question that are going to be in heaven or not. And, you know, rightly so, uh, but, you know, you, I can give you my opinion on, you know, what I think is going to be, uh, you know, seen there and, and what's not going to be seen there. I do believe that we're going to be able to and know uh, our loved ones that have been saved uh, and the, the ones that weren't saved, I believe, uh, will be completely erased, you know, from our mind. Uh, but we're going to see and know, uh, you know, mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers uh, and even, I believe, you know, wives, even though there's no 
marriage in heaven. And again, that the reason that there's no marriage in heaven is there's no reason to procreate anymore because all of God's children are with him. Uh, and the, the, the heaven is filled only with those whose names are written in the Lamb books, Lamb's Book of Life. So there's no reason to procreate and populate the earth. So heaven is already going to be populated with believers. So, you know, how does that play out? Well, you know, again, if you have a spouse, I believe that uh, is uh, in the Lord and with the Lord uh, in, in heaven, you're going to know them. Uh, you won't, uh, you know, I, you're not going to, you know, have sexual desires for them. And, and don't think uh, that, you know, all of your, um, you know, desires aren't going to be met in heaven. They will be, you know, it's going to be something completely new, eternal, different, glorious, holy, uh, like in nothing we can even comprehend. But I believe we will know uh, and be able to see uh, and, and um, you know, remember uh, people because, you know, when Jesus came back, uh, he was able to, in his glorified body, show uh, you know, uh, doubting Thomas, his nail scarred hands and, and, and the, the, uh, the, the piercing in his side, uh, and, you know, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So again, so, you know, that's just my thoughts. I, I think that's, uh, you know, kind of what it's going to be like, uh, but there's going to be no more death. There's listen. So today I'm coming to you and I've, I've been really, you know, under the weather, uh, especially today, but the last, you know, four or five days, uh, even up in Ohio, I uh, don't know what I've got going on, but, you know, I haven't felt good and just, you know, all day today, been under the weather, honestly, and it's been a tough day. But I can tell you, um, I can I can talk about heaven because, you know, there's not going to be any more, uh, you know, pain. There's not going to be any more suffering, not going to be any more illnesses and sicknesses and death and, and any of those things. It's going to be like nothing you and I can can ever comprehend and, you know. Uh, so again, heaven, the new Jerusalem, very symbolic of the life of a, a believer. Your foundation needs to be built on the, the apostles' teachings, the word of God. Uh, and it needs to be, you know, we need to understand the significance of Israel. And Israel is not the church. The, you know, the Israel is the nation, the geographical nation and the geographical and, and, and people that God has chosen. Jesus is going to come back. He's going to reign uh, in Jerusalem in the on this earth. Uh, he's going to reign along with all of the saints uh, that have died uh, before us and those that have been uh, been taken out uh, before the great tribulation. Uh, and he's going to reign from Jerusalem for a thousand years. And uh, again, this is another opportunity for uh, people to repent. Uh, even during that time, uh, those that are alive, you know, after uh, the the great tribulation uh, and, you know, there's going to be, um, you know, a, a, a kingdom here on earth that Jesus will obviously the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he will reign. We're going to help him administrate uh, his, his kingship and, it's going to be a wonderful uh, thousand years uh, of really heaven on earth for us. And uh, then this earth is going to be, you know, completely destroyed uh, by fire. And, uh, you know, the devil is going to be, you know, cast loosed from uh, his chains. And he's going to be cast into the lake of fire along with all unbelievers. So, you know, all of these things are coming uh, and, you know, we talked about all of the terrible judgments uh, that are coming, the seal judgments, the, the trumpet, the bull judgments, and, you know, all of these terrible things that are coming. And again, uh, it, it's your responsibility, my responsibility to know the word, know the times and the seasons. You know, Jesus gave us the, the parable of the fig tree. Uh, and, you know, when it's, with, when its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. Uh, and, you know, the leaves began to sprout for the church. Uh, and for the second coming, when Israel in a day became a nation again on May 14th, 1948. And Jesus said there'll be a generation that will by no means pass away till all these things are fulfilled. So, there, you know, Jesus taught that there'd be a generation that would see, you know, wars and rumors of wars and nation against nation and, and uh, pestilences and, and famines and earthquakes and, you know, all of these things that we're seeing accelerate all at once now you know there's a generation of seeing all of these things take place you are that generation 
I am that generation, and uh, we we I need to understand, you know, how close we are uh, to His second coming, and especially uh, to the the great tribulation period that's about to come upon the earth. So, but man, heaven is going to be glorious. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, again, there's no place like home. You know, uh, you know, for me. You know, when I come home, you know, I, I've got a wife here ready to care for me. She's, you know, if I if I'm not feeling good, she's got, you know, soup ready for me or, uh, you know, we, Scott, you, you got to get some rest and she'll start taking care of me and stuff. Well, heaven, we're not going to have those those problems because everything's going to be taken care of for us. And it's going to be glorious like nothing you and I can even begin to fathom. So, again, I'm coming to you tonight, you know, sick and not feeling well. And, you know, I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, and, and really under the weather today, uh, extremely, uh, but I'm coming to you because I'm about my father's business. And I want you to know, uh, that the, the time is near and you need to get right with the Lord. And I'm speaking to family first and friends and associates, uh, whoever you are, whoever you are hearing this word, uh, that heaven is a place, uh, and it's a place prepared for, for us believers. And certainly I, I want you and, and the Lord wants as many as possible, uh, to uh, to be there. He desires that none would perish, that all would repent uh, and, and, and be saved. You know, so the gift of life uh, is has been offered to you uh, and to me. And all we have to do is receive it. And, and, you know, that means to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, that he died, that he was buried, that he rose again uh, from the grave and he took upon himself the sins of the world. And he's now sitting at the right hand of the father and he's coming back again, not as the lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. Uh, that's already been accomplished. He's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah to judge the nations, those that have not accepted him as the son of God, as God himself, uh, and, and denied him. And, and they're going to unfortunately, uh, spend all of eternity in a much, Ter a very terrible place, uh, the lake of fire. Uh, so anyway, so there's no temple in heaven. Amen. And why is that? Because God is going to be there with us and there, there, there's no need for a temple. He is the temple. Uh, and, and those of us that are saved are going to be uh, in the temple, in his temple with him uh, for all eternity. So there's no need. Amen. So uh, that's the end of the series. So thanks for joining us. And again, if you're uh, you know, first time listening tonight and you, you like what you heard and you want to help, you know, share the gospel. The best thing you could do and the simplest thing you can do is just uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Uh, we're getting close to 100 subscribers now. And once we get to 100, we can start uh, getting some income uh, and, and that we'll take that money then. And we'll start to promote our videos and things like that and get out in front of a broader audience. And we're not pulling any punches here. You know, we're not uh, trying to entertain people. We're preaching the word. We're word stream live. We're streaming the word of God live. You know, I read, you know, two whole chapters in Revelations today with you and gave you some commentary on it and, and did some research on some scriptures and things like that. But, you know, for the most part, it's just the reading of the word of God and the streaming of the word of God live. So we want to get to a broad as audience as we can, because we're commissioned by the Lord, you know, to go ye into all the world and preach the good news. Amen. And we're able to do that uh, through, you know, this incredible technology that we have today. Uh, and we're able to do it even more so when the, when believers begin to support us uh, financially, we can then, you know, uh, do uh, marketing and, and get our uh, videos out there and get the word out there uh, because we feel that's what God is calling us to do. The, 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 the world, go ye in all the world, it, the new public square is online. And we need as many online ministers as we can get in this day and age. If you want to reach the world, you're not going to reach the world in a building on Sunday morning. You will not reach the world in a building on Sunday morning. You got to go into the world and preach the gospel. And that's what we're doing at WordStream Live. We got to go into the world. Where's the world today? Well, they're getting ready to be in the metaverse. And we need to bring the word into the metaverse. We need to bring the word where all... Uh, where the world is, where the cosmos is. And that's, that's online today. Amen. So that's what we're doing at WordStream Live. So appreciate you. If you'd like to donate uh, to the to the ministry, uh, you can do so. There's a link in the video description uh, that'll be uploaded uh, once this video uh, goes live. But appreciate you being here with us this evening. 
uh, and uh, know that you're in my heart and in your in my prayers. And again, the Lord desires that none would perish, that all would come to repentance. So, you know, that's the prayer that I have for everyone hearing this message tonight. So let's go into all the world and preach the good news and make disciples, mythetes, hearers, not only hearers, but doers of the word. That's what we're to do and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and, and that's the great commission that we have. Amen. So have a great evening. Glad you joined us here uh, this evening. And we'll see you again on Wednesday on WordStream Live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll see you then.